Welcome to I'm the Worst Podcast. If you aren't aware, this is the podcast that has comedians share what they're the absolute worst at as we explore some of the biggest failures in life and find ways to laugh at it. First thing first, I want to say thank you for supporting this podcast, giving it a listen. Uh, If you want to go the extra mile, take a small moment to like it, uh, review it, subscribe to it, any of that stuff. Just press pause right now, give it a like, give it a review, give it five stars, whatever it is. Stuff like that helps in a huge way. Uh, appreciate that stuff. Um, the bigger we grow, the better this podcast will get. That's my promise to you. Um, I am the podcast host, um, the worst host, maybe. Who knows? We'll find out. Uh, my name is Jeff Buck. You can find more of me by looking me up at Funny as Buck on Instagram, Twitter, any of that stuff. Uh, I fail at a lot of stuff, but uh, failing's good. You know, you put the failure out in the world and uh, some, you know, you let people criticize it, you get better at it. So that's all what I'm doing with this thing, I guess. You know, I'm failing at this intro as we speak. It's horrible, uh, but we're figuring it out as we go. Joining me today for uh, to talk about what they're the absolute worst at is one of my pals in comedy. He produces his own stand-up shows in Los Angeles. That's how I met him. Uh, once I met him, I loved his energy, his passion for producing and performing. The hilarious, the one, the only Mark Boyd, everybody. Clap it up. Thanks, man. Thanks for that. Thanks yeah. for that. That's cool. They're going, they're going um, wild for you. Mark, how are you? Oh, dude, I'm pretty good. Um, you know, uh, I'm in my new place. You know, got a new spot. Nice. Where are you new at now? Career. You don't don't just um, don't you know say specifically. I'm like I'm in Hollywood area. Okay, you know? nice. East, east, east leaning towards East Hollywood, I'd say. Nice. Yeah, I like the mm-hmm. NPR shirt. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Good shirt. Good shirt. Um, mm-hmm. Well, before we get into it, uh, real quick, let anyone listening know, you have anything you want to plug, any shows coming up, any projects you're working on, any social media handles to give out? Rastafar Unicorn is my Instagram. I mean, I'm sure that we will have uh, that going anyway. But uh, I mean, I got a show, Parking Sucks, August 20th. Oh, August 20th. man. Oh. August 20th, Parking Sucks. There'll be a flyer coming soon. We got a cool lineup, you know, of some good people. It should be fun. So yeah, that that's that. Wait, um, where uh, where's that at? In the Koreatown area? You, it is. Oh, so it's at a secret location. We have a oh, new location, oh, shit. but it's a secret location. I can't even give the location now. G. All right, you all know? right, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. August twentieth. Just follow uh, Rastafari Unicorn on instagram follow mark and mm-hmm. you'll be able to uh you'll be able to find out where that show is those are good shows nothing but the best this guy does um sweet hell yeah man um opposite of the best is the worst and that's what we're here to talk about um mm. uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll start by saying i'm the worst at uh producing this podcast sometimes i was supposed to have you on last week supposed to have an episode out every wednesday missed the wednesday you know, sometimes when you fall off a schedule, you feel like, damn, I let everybody down. All of those few listeners I have. But uh, if you're still listening, I appreciate you sticking with us and understand that I have no sponsors yet. I have no ad revenue. I have no way of making money on this. So, you know, I excuse myself for saying this is free. Uh, <laughs> that's my excuse. That's it's, tough. it's tough sticking to, yeah, a, yeah. to a schedule, even when it comes to like uh, producing shows. I'm sure you, you can relate to that. It's hard to like, sometimes you fall behind on the bookings. Sometimes you fall behind on, I don't know, solidifying dates and things like that. You ever, you ever run into that problem? Man, dude, actually was, you do, uh, I was doing a weekly show. So yeah, like as soon as you're, you need to be asking about the next week as you're walking up to do that week. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Then somebody will fall out, whatever. It's always some craziness. So that would say also we're doing something outside of just what takes care of us. So it's like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got the, the thing that puts bread on the table. And I know everybody says it's super cliche, but like we're doing something totally outside of anything that makes sense for our survival, really. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not. Maybe it's self actualization. I'm not trying to get all super whatever, blah, blah on here, but just like it, it's taking the other brain and in, in, energy, you know, this brain real estate is all that shit. So hell yeah, <laughs> I got run into stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it takes time. Oh, let me go find a new venue. Let me contact this person. Let me make sure everything's in order. Let me make sure the, the marketing is running as it's going. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Um, in, L- in Los Angeles, where we're competing against literally the people that are doing it at the highest level. What? <laughs> Insane. <laughs> right? And week by yeah. week, week by week is stressful as is. It's better to have it like at least like from a show standpoint, if you can have weeks of shows booked up in advance, that helps. Cause like once you're down week to week, that shit will catch up to you. You know, it's like living check to check. It feels like you're like, fuck, can yes. I make it to the, I got to get all this done in seven days, but I have real life shit going in between those seven days. It's tough. Uh, yeah. It's tough when you're poor too. I'm also the worst of money. I'm poor right now. I hate that. But uh, you know, everyone, you know, that fluctuates everyone. Money comes and goes, baby. But this podcast will be here forever. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I really, you know, I feel good, super like I'm doing super good about money. No, I don't feel that way right now. But yeah. sometimes I feel like I'm doing super good with money. And then when I'm doing bad, I beat myself up so bad. Yeah, it feels like the end of the world sometimes. You're like, ah, oh, you're just like you were doing things that you did in your 20s and shit the oh, same right. feeling and it's like will it ever end you know right right it's like um, I'm, a, I'm supposed to be an adult and i'm still buying ramen gross buy, you know what i'm saying like just even to get holding by. that bag and looking at it and then you yeah. say to yourself i'm never gonna be here again you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i ain't never doing that thing again just yeah, yeah. the couch with a couple corners so i can put it in the dude uh, Fuck you yeah, coin yeah. star i'm never coming back <laughs> I don't, I don't even need coins. You're anymore. flicking off the coin star. Oh nah, son. Coin star, like, it'll be back. Yeah. Uh, Remember, I used so to funny. wish I found quarters now. <laughs> nah. Oh, uh, man. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, but yeah, we're not here to talk about the things I'm bad at. Uh, we're here to talk about what you suck at, Mark. What are you bad at? What have you failed at? What do you feel like you're the absolute worst at? That's the question I like to ask people on here. Yeah, I think I'm the absolute worst at uh, woo, functioning, expressing myself when I'm in a stress stressful situation. Mm. Um, like literally, you know, saying those emotions out loud, especially with as far as I've come. You know, I, I should not. Uh, of course, everybody has triggers and things like that. Duh, but it's just like, uh, no, I mean, like I go back. I go back to the worst coping mechanisms possible and then like express myself and just immediately go to complete panic mode and or just the worst case scenario thought without even there's a whole bunch of options and here's the worst one and then I just jump over all of them and just start there right every time and um, what are you so you're saying like uh so you're bad at communicating in a stressful situation do you just like yeah do you do you jump to conclusions is what you're saying? Or do you just like, I jump to all the conclusions. Do you, do you like not communicate at all? Or are you just like, you just are like, well, you over communicate for your behalf without listening to others. I wish that I didn't communicate. I say <laughs> everything. That's the uh, worst thing possible. Yeah. <laughs> everything. Yeah. And the worst things. And, and, and like, if a situation is, I'll come in at work if i feel like i'm not doing it bad i'd be like look if you guys are just fire me i get it already like i'm a piece of trash and just like should i just be caring about that <laughs> just shoot yourself and like, foot already right there sometimes i've left jobs because they're like you fired yourself you know yeah, they hit me back yeah. a week later like you fired yourself we were just giving you a performance eval uh, but because of the workup of me not doing that well and then walking me into the office and the feeling I just said, you know what? I, I get it. I, I fucking, I don't even know why you guys are giving me a chance. Uh, I shouldn't have been here. Uh, this has been great. Uh, thank you guys for the opportunity. And then I walk out before they even get to, you know, it, they'll be like, yo. Yeah. It's like the, the anxiety of the stress makes you so uncomfortable that you'd rather just like, it's like a fight or flight and you choose flight every time almost. We live in the the buildup of things, you know, the, yeah, the yeah. moment is so small. So we live in all the anticipation so like all of that anticipation my mind is going way too fast to really to, to let you make a decision for me that's my issue and like it's not even anybody making a decision for me but that's what i think i think about the power of it so then i'm just gonna ex- i'm just gonna act or express myself you know this whole just getting into this place i was like i uh, immediately knowing that i had to move i was like i'm going back home i'm calling my mom right now because i can't do this again <laughs> like not even Looking for places. I told people, hey, bro, I think I'm about to move back home. Call my mom. Hey, mom, you think I can uh, take that room downstairs? 
Like I went there immediately yeah, before yeah. even looking for places. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah. thinking about how it's the housing market is. I'm thinking about how crazy it is. I'm thinking about my credit. I'm thinking about um, the stress of moving into a place. The thing, the fact that it's summer and it's hard for everybody to find places. Yeah. All of that stuff together, and how many times I have and struggling with housing, I immediately just tell everyone I'm moving back home to the nice LA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, before I even tried or, or, or did anything, you know, so mm-hmm. that, <laughs> yeah. So you just go, you go straight to the, just, yeah, that, that easy, like, why even try almost mentality. Uh, and why that's- try. And I think that I, in my mind, I'm, um, I'm acting so that, you know, things can't happen to me. Mm-hmm. I'm acting quickly. Right. So that you can't do it to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it to myself. Right. Right. Almost like, like a defense the power mechanism. It's an intense one. <laughs> and it's yeah. hilarious because it's like, bro, we were, no one was thinking that. bro. <laughs> we were actually going to promote you at the job. <laughs> yes. Uh, or just like, what, crazy. like I get in trouble when I was young and I should be like, are, are you guys going to hit me? Or like, am I grounded? You know, or just like preparing, jumping just way ahead of anyone else's mm-hmm. thoughts, you know? So, yeah. But you got the apartment. That's good. So you know, that's lit, man. You just took, you just ended up taking it step by step instead of backwards, instead of going back. Oh, I did what I had to do. I grabbed my nuts <laughs> and I started looking and I dealt with all the weirdness. I dealt with, you know, I'm not trying to say it's discrimination anymore, but I def people are definitely curating who they want in apartments, you know. Uh, I remember last thing. time we were talking about it, you were telling me that was like they wanted the proof of income like the last two checks plus this. And then they were still asking for more after you gave them the quote unquote requirements they initially asked for. They have a thing of requirements. They're doing a lot of, I'm not going to say bait and switch, but there's got to be another thing of it. But right now they're like saying in bid letters, they'll say this month. And then they'll say six months in, six months in, it changes to this. Uh Or they'll say, this is the requirement for moving. And then once you show them that, then they say, those are always the minimum requirements. Really, we need this, you know, and, and everyone, you know, all the owners and everybody talks to each other. Right, so right, right. around the entire city, rent is all the same right now. Right, right, it's right. not like, oh, shit, you can find good rent here or rent good rent here. Yeah, no, no, like, no, no, no homeowner is that's rent. Not, no landlord is being nice about it. I mean, like, well. Let's yeah. undercut the market. <laughs> well, no, they're just like a studio, no matter what the square footage is, it's 14, 14, 50 right now. You know what I'm saying? 13, no one's saying 13 anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it is 13, if it is 13, it does not have a fucking, it doesn't have a a, 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 a kitchen. <laughs> you have right. a burner. You know what I'm saying? Or it has like one stove. If you yeah. get 10, 50, you're living in a shoe closet. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, that's what it is. A one bedroom, eight, and look, 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 I'm not going to do this whole pricing thing, but just like, it's the same everywhere right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's it's kind of crazy. And it doesn't even make sense. Are you in a so, studio right now? This is I'm in a studio, yeah. 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 That's good. And I'm happy with it. I'm cool. You know, it's, it's decent. I have zero storage whatsoever. I have yeah. like a closet, but no other ways of storage. Very little cabinet at, uh, access, yeah. you know. So I'm going to have to do what I have to do to make it. And I still like the place a lot. I'm not going to act like it's not wonderful. It's clean. I don't see any signs of roaches or anything like that. You know, <laughs> There's um, one going across the camera as we talk. There's like, <laughs> running hilarious. Yeah, so I don't see any signs of that. And it looks like they updated things and the paint looks new. But uh, I'm just going to edit this video and play it back for you. And it's just roaches all behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crawling up the wall. I don't see it. It's one on my face. Uh, hilarious. But um, I see roaches. The roaches on my eyeball. Right. Now, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'm I'm real chill with it right now. It's not bad. Um, so that's good. That. But uh, yeah, circling back on the yeah the, the the communication within stressful situations. I feel like a lot of people are gonna relate to that. I can definitely relate to that. I'm I'm the type of person that'll like clam up. Uh, I, I kind of just get quiet sometimes in stressful situations. So my fault is like not expressing the things that i need i'm like I'm trying to think of a specific example like maybe even like um yeah like right now if i'm being honest like just filling out like uh you know fucking resumes and trying to look for another job it just seems so tedious and stressful and instead of just like communicating and asking for help i'm just like ah just 
I just put it off, you know, I just like, I don't know. I'm just like pushing that resume down the, down the line. I'd be like of importance. Like I'll get to it later, you know, where it's like, we're all uh, talking about our survival things. You're, you're talking about free. I'm talking about flight, you know? Yeah. 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 But Who's fawning, you know, you know about fawn. No, what's, what's fawning. Oh, bro. This is the new, this is the last of the survival reactions okay. that we didn't know about fight f- flight freeze and fawn okay so fawn is where if you have a stressor or a person that's actually that you're trying to survive from um you do whatever they do as a means for survival (laughs) oh like you do you like you like like uh what cute cute up to them like i don't know what to call it but you like kind of uh Mm. Is it get like seduced a, by the stress or like kind of succumb to them and would do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Um, you agree with them. You say yes to whatever they ask. You may even offer sex. You know what I'm saying? All these type of things. Uh, just because yeah. you were trying to survive in that moment. I see. And it could be it's, almost like, it's almost like it's trauma response. <clears throat> that, but also like, it's like, you know, for instance, uh let's say you're a girl and there's a guy and he's scary as fuck and you don't know whether what's going on or anything like that you may act you may act like you're attracted to that dude in that moment and you don't even know why just because you're just, trying to survive it uh interesting interesting yes dude Funny. this is something that we're not even we don't even know and then you'll go back like why the fuck did i act like that or let's say there's a a complete stud in the room with a whole bunch of just like smaller guys or mm-hmm. just like a, a big guy that's around another dude and he's saying the wrong thing let's say he's just like we don't need to go over there it's the worst idea all right just because guys are afraid they'll be like yeah yeah let's listen to him yeah yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> and you see that happen you see that uh, happen and then there'll be one dude like no that's, that's why so many thing. people listen to my dumb ideas because i'm so strong yeah and intimidating. You're, fucking, <laughs> you're so masculine dude yeah, yeah that's yeah. the thing everyone's yeah, just yeah. fawning around me i get it uh, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I mean, yeah, that's wild. All right. I didn't realize that. No, I haven't reached that stage yet, but I'm definitely in that freeze stage at, at certain times. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you know, whatever. Uh, ever, everyone can relate to one of those stages, I suppose. Shout out to Hell the yeah. fight. Shout out to the fighters, though. It's tough. <laughs> Shout out to the fighters, dog. You know, but you may be a fighter in one situation and a freeze. Sure, in another. sure. Of course. Of course. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For some reason, I swung that time, and I don't know why. You know, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah, what do you, do you see? So it's obviously it's like a recognizable trigger you have, like uh, responding this way in stressful situations. Do you find mm-hmm. ways to like? Do you see a path of improvement, or do you like find? Do you acknowledge it? And be like, how can I stop from doing that? Or because well, you're pretty you know, con- you're, you're pretty self aware of it, obviously. After yeah, the fact, maybe though, but it's maybe in the moment, are you aware of it? If I sit still for a second in it and, and, and say, what are my feelings right now? That's a big helper. I'm like, okay, what really are all my options? Mm-hmm. What really are all my options? Not like, what am I reacting to or feeling like that? What really are? And listing them out and saying them. And, and sometimes writing down a pro and con sheet or legitimately looking at my situation and looking at what I have in my hand rather than just uh, looking, thinking in the past or thinking in the future. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big thing anxieties in the future you know sufferings in the past so just being like oh i suffered so bad that bad and i don't want to do that in the future so let me just let me just you're, you're never even giving yourself to sit and breathe for a second be like well right now i have housing yeah and i have this until this time and it's so like what that, can i do in between this time? yeah yeah it's that gratitude i feel like if, 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 you, if you can solidify yourself in that present gratitude then you're able to kind of like Use that to slingshot forward, I guess, right? Because think, look at what you have right in front of right, you. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you're grateful mm-hmm. for everything you have, then it's like, okay, if I if I'm grateful for it, then maybe I'm not so scared to lose it, or maybe I'm not so scared to change going forward. Man, but, you can be connected to everything and not yeah. like attached to it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a good way, though. So yeah, but that's wild. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough though. It's tough, like uh being present slowing down and like and calming yourself down especially when you're against a time crunch like your situation of like obviously you got to find a place before you get kicked out of your old one or whatever you know sometimes that time crunch it's like 
I don't have time to sit here and be like, what do I do next? You know, it's like a race against the clock. So, it's, oh, yeah. then you start realizing that there's everything is on a day schedule. So, yeah, there's only so many, so much time that you can look for places. There's only so much time that you can go actually do a walkthrough. There's only so much time that the people that schedule the walkthroughs are at work. <laughs> there's only so much time of the day that they answer, right. right? And so the prime time to be answering these people as is at this time. What am I doing? I'm at work during You're this time. You're at work. Time. Yeah, exactly. And then your boss is also behind, breathing down your neck, like, why haven't you closed the deal? And I'm like, you know, you can't only time, you can't like look at them with tears in your eyes, like yeah. I'm gonna be homeless. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, they, don't give a shit. they may care as much as they want, as much as they kind of do, but you know, yeah. as much as they can, because they're not assholes. But yeah, uh, but uh, some of that is just all these points of time when you gotta level up in a way. You know, they're just like mm-hmm. everything comes to a, and it's just like that. These things in your life were coming to an end. You you kind of knew they were. You know, you might have let it. You know, it may have came for whatever reason, but you have to, all of this has to change for you to get to whatever is next. I know that sounds so weird, but I felt myself have to, it's like all this, and then I, I got shot out. And I'm not saying whether it was up or down, but I had to change my whole life really quick. Very yeah. weird <laughs> feeling. Well, it's, that's, um, it's, that, yeah. it's the of metaphor. Of course, that feels, you feel pressure. Yeah. That's that metaphor of like pressure creates diamonds, right? So it's like, yeah. Some people, you know, you don't realize it, but the that that amount of pressure ends up making you strive and work work towards something more than you thought you would before. But you, you know, know I, yeah. Or you can crumble to yeah. dirt. Not everyone's diamond. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. I'm trying to think who else is like who who's notoriously bad at 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 the same thing you're bad at, where it's like that over communicating or or lack of good communication in a stressful situation. Um, I mean, a lot of people can, can, uh, can relate to that. I'm sure I'm trying to think of it. There's like a notorious example of that in the pop culture world. Um, you know, I, I feel know. I've been feeling and very, it, it, I've been feeling very, uh, or people when I'm telling stories of the kind of, uh, conversations I've been having, it's just expressing other people. It's just like, what a pat on my back to say this, but like Larry David in a way, um mm-hmm. in in that i create awkward moments for myself just because i'm thinking too ahead you know or right. i'm addressing something too fast yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that, yeah, that's a good that? example i can see that you getting into larry <laughs> david situations uh, all the time dude <laughs> bad bro it's so bad um but just like man so bad dude it's, it, and then when i tell the story to somebody they're like cracking up but i'm like no, dude, I'm like fucking up a situation for myself. And they're like, dude, yeah. this is going to pass. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's um, pretty much the entire show of Kirby Enthusiasm is him just jumping yes. to conclusions without thinking it through. And then, just, yes. yeah, you left wanting to just, you can't watch. I have a problem with trying to watch more than like two or three episodes of that straight because I'm just like, ah, <laughs> the whole time. Like, why? Why are you doing this? To yourself? Oh, dude. <laughs> you <Our> know, like, <laughs> It's a Rube Gable, or what's that shit called? You know the the machines that they make that it'll be like a fucking a uh, okay. What will happen? Somebody will knock over a domino. The domino set will fucking knock over a a, a ball. The ball will go down. A oh, whole I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll hit a lever. That's that, what yeah. that show is. Gotcha. That show is just a, a, a things that are it's knocking ca- things over, cause and wacky effects, basically. Yeah, that ends and with one little ending that all comes culminates to this right, one right. big ass thing that is all connected. And uh, yeah, like when I think back on when a moment happens, I'm like, oh my god, that happened because of that way over there. Like yeah. I'm struck because of this. I brought this up here. I told this person this. Now that and it just like all comes together, and it's it's like damn i mean it's no it's not funny at the moment and also a lot of that shit is because he's loaded but he gets away with it but whatever like yeah, yeah, yeah. um but that that's the, that's the shit but there's probably other people that fucking say a bunch of fucked up shit you know um in those of moments course. of course yeah i mean everyone yeah <laughs> but you feel like why you can't watch it because it stresses you out you're like i can't sometimes yeah well i mean i love the show it's well written and it's hilarious but it's like more than three episodes i'm just like ah i have anxiety watching the show and <laughs> just being like <laughs> i just want to like shake them like what are you doing <laughs> yeah yes 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 yeah um so and then i don't know that. i don't i don't know who the, who the best who would be the best at, at communicating during stressful situations i guess you got to look at 
you got to look at like, I guess, like first responders or people in those situations, you know, you're trained to communicate through high stressful situations, but I don't know. I think even then it's just like, but I don't know. That's only like circumstantial stress, you know, it's like, you know, circumstantial stress. What a no one, good no one, yeah. Wow. <laughs> No one's perfect in handling everyday situation. You know, what, what might be yeah, stressful. I'm like, are home. ambulance guys good at yeah, home? Yeah, yeah. Like, they- like <laughs> resuscitating someone with CPR might be not not stressful. You, you could be like, you know, cold-blooded doing that at your job, just like cool as a cucumber. And then you go home. You and can't hug like, your son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so dark. <laughs> Right, yeah, it's just something hard. about it. Again. It's like I can't, I can't take, love him. Take him? No, it's so fucked up. Uh, uh, fucked up. Right. Yeah, you know, just like his fucking toilet backs up. He's like, I don't know how to handle this. I don't, you know, he like, burns his house down. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's the straw that breaks that camel's back. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. on the inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really, you know, yeah, I got a little bit of eight. No, I'm ADHD. I'm fucking ADHD completely, and um. You know, in this stress, I, in that, those, these stressful little couple of weeks, I kind of zoned in and was able to focus on my life in a way and, and use critical thinking of my brain to get through it. Right. And thankfully, you know, you can thank yourself for your brain at that moment or for your mind to be able to do all that shit. But, uh, you know, in ADD though, still hyper-focus is a thing. So when you hyper focus on something, you're totally neglecting something else mm-hmm. behind you, you know. And so uh, my health, like I still was working, I was working out and everything, and I was able to hit the gym, but I missed a few days, and I also started eating like trash. So I was on such a good diet, but because I was so crunch time, I wasn't making my own meals or I wasn't going to other things. So I lack lacks back into eating like trash, you know. Yeah. Just to get the fast food or just to get something quick, which is terrible, you know, but I literally could not get home sometimes and make food for myself and or make sure I got the healthiest food, you know, so yeah. that is a thing, you know, you, you know, you, you, it's like, you're still taking a step back in some of the things in your life, for you sure, know, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's just. Yeah, and that that stuff can snowball or it's like either snowball or what you're saying is like, or you might move forward in one aspect or take another step back. And uh, maybe that's a form of balance. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, that, that the nutrition thing is like, uh, I mean, that that's that's at the roots of mental health as well. I mean, if you haven't eaten gut healthy, health, it's mental health. Yeah. If you've been <laughs> eating healthy and then all of a sudden you're just slamming fucking fast food for seven days straight that fucking stress isn't going to feel better. You know, it's, it's going to you're perpetuating it. Yeah, you're yeah, perpetuating because yeah. you're throwing trash into your stomach that literally is not giving yourself healthy things to, to use your brain for. I'm able to talk about this right now because we're all oh, we're talking about it. we're outside of life. Yeah, but yeah. literally there's a Chick-fil-A fucking drink right there. You know? <laughs> I'm, getting, like, I'm, drinking oh! a, I'm drinking a beer. What are, what are we saying? I'm about to go get one after this shit, man. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> um, a beer a day is not terrible. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. oh dude, I live in a fucking man. Where I live now is got some, you know. I don't even know. I'm not trying to knock the town or anything, but it's just yeah. vices everywhere. Um, I'm literally in a chicken triangle. Like there's a wing stock, a day's hot chicken, and a Chick Fil A that I live in the center of. Dude. <laughs> it, it's beyond walking distance, dude. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, I could reach my hand out to the drive-through for Chick Fil A. It's, yeah, too, yeah. it's too soon. I, let, let, I can if I not on dude, Sundays. Dude, if I bro. not on Sundays. I, I want to turn the camera so you can see where the Chick Fil A is, bro. But then I'm gonna give away where the fuck I live. Yeah. Um, but uh, right. yeah, I man, I, already, I think I already know. <laughs> but, <laughs> I know. You keep game. Chick-fil-A. I know that Chick Fil A. Yeah. So it's too fucking close, um, and like whatever. It's just like that. And then you got liquor stores, fucking four liquor stores within everything, yeah. and then like fucking everything else like you know you're just like oh shit like there's all my demons right there fucking real easy to grab you know so whatever I, I, what else why i leveled up some so now my discipline has to level up some so you know um that's just that man it's the game son uh, so that's that's that um all right communicating through social situations that's what you're the worst at that's what you feel like you're yeah. the worst at 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take it, man. I feel like people can relate to that for sure. Uh, also, it's like that. I just explained intense, intense stress. But let's talk about also like, like slightly meandering stress. Like you're just in a different environment. Like uh, I'm oh, fucking yeah. at the comedy store. You yeah. know, that's just a different weird situation because right, right, I'm out right. here because I want to be doing stand up and I see somebody that it would be nice to talk to. And then I walk up and I try to shake hands, but he was taking somebody else's hand. So our hands <laughs> go like this and then he shakes the guy next to me. And I'm just ah! you know? <laughs> like, shit like that. I didn't even put my hand out. Why, why don't I think I, I don't even know you. What You know, all these things. So yeah. just like they're saying stupid shit like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Coming up and talking to someone that you don't even know and saying something that you think is going to make you connect with them super hard, which is just an overstep, but you're, you're, you're throwing a shot in the dark and really you just offended that dude. Cause he's like, who the fuck are you to even say that? You know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so bad. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 It's hard. It's hard. Chameleon into situations like that. Being at a party, you don't know anybody and be like, all right. Oh like, my God. The older you get, bro. When you were younger, I'd go up to anybody. Who's your favorite dinosaur? Or, you know, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. You know. That's like, yeah. but even, the, and that, that was college, man. I was doing that in college. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, I just remember like, now that I know I, I have autism, I, I feel like I, I always used, I guess, in those situations specifically when it came to like meeting people or like mingling in a, in a, in a social situation, I guess my defense mechanism always kind of fell back on comedy at times. I tried to be the funny guy just to get people to like me. But, uh, but yeah, I just remember, you know, I remember like going to parties in college or high school and people were drinking, I, I just doing like funny pranks and stuff and just like filling up a liquor bottle of water. Be like, you guys don't see me chug this. Ugh! you know like being stupid like who is yeah. that guy like i just get but him. now like, you're there with a whole bunch of people that are like that yeah now that, now that are funny in all these different ways right right and so but now it's like you throw yourself in a in that setting now like you know fucking especially at a comedy club or something you're an adult everyone else there is appearing to be adult as well do you still try and do that stupid joke everyone's gonna be like who the fuck is this guy you know like it doesn't People work that turn way anymore, and look you know? away from you it's all or right. they'll close the circle yeah, on yeah, you yeah, yeah. now you're out of this you're standing outside like, of the circle you can't, you can't back try and be the funny guy in a room full of funny guys it's like you're gonna nope. try it too hard bro and so it's like you yeah. go to a little party a little social event where it's just regular everyday people and be the funny guy be like oh how charming you do it in front of comedians they're gonna roast you like get the fuck out of here <laughs> like uh, they give you a look and they <laughs> fucking turn away uh, the other day i went and uh oh man i don't know what i really need to fucking hear no stories but i tried to this dude was like hey man yeah i saw you park your car and there's a line of guys and then i was like yeah yeah yeah. are you from chicago and then they just all looked away from me they just turned away looked away oh, and I'm like, okay all right yeah. <laughs> i just walked outside like oh that's the game son okay this maybe, maybe this is an i guess this is an example i'm thinking of of uh of, of over communicating a stressful situation is like the you ever meet somebody that you were like really wanting you know you know like you look up to like maybe it'd be someone famous a comedian musician whatever someone like that and uh you meet them and you just won't shut up you're just talking too much but blah, 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 you know I, 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 i've loved you ever since this I, blah, blah, blah. by the way dude i think it's this this this, this. and they're just like giving you that look like all right, shut the fuck up. And you're just like an overdrive. I feel like I have, I've definitely seen other people do that. And then like, this is tough. This is tough right now. This interaction, these two people are having. Uh, and I feel like I've probably been that guy as well. Who's done that to somebody. But uh, I think when, you know, you just blind blinded to it in the moment, probably you just thinking like, oh, man, I like, I, I am getting better at it because now I've seen enough people to keep it cool. Just just like yesterday that just happened. I'm like, oh, fuck, these motherfuckers, what this, whatever. But that just happened. But no, when at first, I'll be like, oh, I would be in the corner. Like, right, I'm about to walk up to him and I'm about to be like, yo, yo, right. dude, fucking great scene. I was like, well, when I yeah. walk up hey, and then as I'm walking up, someone else is taking a picture, right, with uh, him. And I try and say something else and then someone else is like, hey. And I try again and he's just like, all right, y'all, and walking away. And then I'm like, okay, do I follow him now to say whatever yeah, he's? Right. No, he's gone. I'm going through a whole... I almost Big, did that. Uh, uh, what was it? I guess it's not really a stressful situation at, at this point, but uh, it was like you know I work in this uh, like a big food market. Drew Holiday, the basketball player, came through the other day. Okay. And someone's like, "Oh, Drew Holiday's in here." I'm like, "What? Where?" 
I just stopped what I was doing, started walking around the market trying to find them. I'm like, for what? What am I gonna say? Like, what is the point of me finding them? To be like, <laughs> what's up, Drew? I'm a fan. He's gonna be like, okay, let me eat my fucking ramen and you know, like or whatever. Yeah, you know, let me just you eat just... my tacos and chill. You know, <laughs> what the fuck? Did yeah. I, I why did I feel so compelled to be like, I gotta find them. I gotta say, hey, I gotta, you know, like. No. Yeah, so weird. Anyway, it was pretty off topic, but. But you stopped yourself at mid walk. I mean, at least you stopped yourself. Yeah. Thankfully, you didn't find him. Yeah, uh, I think I was just walking for too long. Yeah, he probably left. <laughs> I better get back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny as hell. Um, yeah, man, I'm the worst at that. I'm the worst. I've lost jobs behind it, lost relationships behind it. I've lost. I love the, I love the idea. Of money. You, I love the idea of you firing yourself. Just being like, I was five minutes yeah. late. It's over. I was five minutes late. They don't want me anymore. I might as well not go in. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, you know, it was great here, dude. You guys are all good to me. And I like give myself a resignation speech. Um, like, Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> we're about yeah. To, uh, you were actually about to be uh, the new manager. <laughs> like, we were just making sure you knew that you got employee of the month. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. Hilarious. It's funny as hell. Um, all right. So that's real, it. Uh, real quick uh, before we go. Um, I do a quick little game with everyone I end the show on called Who's the Worst? Where, uh, mm. you know, like sometimes I'll, I'll just pick like, uh, yeah, we have to figure out who's the worst out of the two of us. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I just pick like, like for example, I've done one where it's like, who's the worst Spider-Man? You know, like Toby, Tom, or Andrew, and, you know, you debate on that. Um, okay. But I'm trying to think. I didn't have one prepared, um, so I'm trying to think of one. Um, you know, it's just, nah, it's not a good one. Who's the worst? How about this? Who's the worst Batman? I feel like who I is the worst Batman? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, George Clooney, but it's not even his fault, you know. <laughs> um, it, it's not even his fault. That was he was Batman Forever and shit, right? Uh, not Batman Forever, but Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. He I had the Jordans. Was like a. And, he, Batman and Robin was George Clooney with uh with Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not his fault, but and those were awesome, but they were hokey movies. So that made him that was the worst Batman series, unfortunately. But like I liked it, Michael. They're fucking had Seal. They had Kiss from a Rose. Like everything was fire. But it, it, looking back on it, it's like that was some '90s hokey ass shit, you know? Yeah. And that made it. The worst I, I still love it but that made him the worst because of that but quite frankly you know that's the one that i i was connected to the most but that is the worst batman <laughs> that is yeah. the worst one um he was bad but, they, they put uh they put the i think that was when they put nipples on the batman suit everyone was there was everyone nipples was on the batman suit, everyone was dude. upset about it <laughs> it's just like yeah. But also, there was like a little bit of BDSM nastiness in the '90s that was like undercover. <laughs> right. like, like they managed to make it a little freaky. Everything was like under, like what is it? Uh, it's uh, pro- it was a little bit provocative, you know. Everything kind of was just like I'm looking that at nasty? I'm, I'm looking at screenshots of that Batman now. It's got a lot of uh, it's got uh, what is that show every comedian likes to reference uh, with the teenagers in high school and shit? Uh, Freaks and geeks? Nah, nah, the new one. Uh, what's it called? Degrassi. Was Zendaya, I think, isn't it? Oh, um, Euphoria. Euphoria, yeah. There's a lot of Euphoria like lighting going on in the in the George Clooney Batman movie. It's got a lot of purple ah. and blue and stuff. It's kind of crazy that that's called Euphoria lighting now. I, I know, right? But yeah, that's just they, the most I, recent experimental calling, lighting. I, we I had. think before it was Euphoria lighting, they were calling it like bisexual lighting. They were calling the gay lighting, dude. They <laughs> yeah. had the purple and blue lighting. Like whenever something gay is about to happen, the lighting yeah, yeah, gets purple, yeah. and then Euphoria came and took that. Is shit. it because of how uh, about it's just what is it because of the movie? The L word? Well, no, the movie Moonlight. Oh, but no, there's a whole series of gay movies where like the girls every time yeah yeah well, there would always be some gay shit you know a lighting that came um a- anyways, hilarious. So, but yeah i just noticed that was you, oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. you don't like gay stuff bro no no i got a purple hoodie on and a blue background yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so funny <laughs> um uh no 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 anyways. uh uh, but yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I thought I, I hate that that was a thing. You know, I was gonna say who's the worst slave. That's what I was gonna say, isn't that? <laughs> All right, go for it. Give it. Give me it. 
Um, I can't. I could. Man. I could have not asked you that question. So, Mark, uh, <laughs> who played the worst slave, son? Um, let me that, think, bro. It has me... to be a white person. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, we're thinking about African slave, African slave movies. Even though I won a bunch of awards. Who played the worst slave, man? I'm going to go ahead and just opt out of this conversation. I'm not going to give my advice on who the best slave was. And who the worst I'm like, was. okay, now who's your best performance? Yeah, nah, I'm going to um, go ahead and just plead the fifth on this you're debate. You're like, that motherfucker, that's fine. That was a good slave. <laughs> you can give your two cents, and I'm going to be like, cool, yeah, Mark. I, I don't even know why I brought that up, but I'm just being silly. Um, <laughs> I think that's hilarious. It's just a funny thing to talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you play too good of a slave, it's almost wrong. Just like playing, you should don't even do it with me. But who played the best? Who played the worst special ed person? You should do that. Not even me. Just do another one because I think that's uh, hilarious. Rosie O'Donnell. Um, whoa, Rosie O'Donnell played a special ed person. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she she played a movie. <laughs> Bro, this movie could never be made today. Uh. Uh. uh Riding the bus of my sister. That's the name of the movie. All right. I'm gonna just. Leave hey, you what that. is she? What kind of special ed is she? Is um, she? She's got autism or? Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't check it out, bro. You I'm go ahead. You go her ahead. With the way she is doing that, it has to be hilarious. Is she making fun of it, or she's she's no? Nah. Oh, she took a serious role. It was like that era era. I mean, I think it's supposed to kind of be a comedy, maybe, but it was within that era of like, you know, what eating Gilbert Gump, Great. Eating Gilbert uh-huh. Great, like all that, where it was like, oh, this is you know, everything that Tropic Thunder was making fun of. Uh it, it was in that, yeah. You just you know what? I'm gonna send you a video. And, Please uh, do, bro. Uh, <laughs> you just said it so easily that obviously it's been talked about. So I can't wait to watch it's it. It's been talked about for oh. sure. I, I can't remember where the clip I saw from. Probably like yeah, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I'll send it to you. Anyways, uh, but yeah, man, that was uh, a. <laughs> I like how we somehow ended on uh, Rosie O'Donnell riding the bus with my sister. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for sharing. Uh, last little plug, just a reminder to go see. Uh, the name of the show is No More Parking, right? Or Parking Sucks. Parking Sucks. sucks. Yeah, that does suck in LA. Um, yeah, yeah, August twentieth, secret location. Um, we'll figure it out. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, me and Keenan Kasnersik, Keenan Lewis. So I just like the child's name in. It's me and him. It's me and Joe. Parking sucks. I, I think I want to turn this into like a fucking. It, it can turn into something where we're starting to like. It's something that we can do all over the place. And I would like to start giving people footage, but we're just like building the crowd up right now. So I'm pretty happy about it. That's really Hell it. yeah! All right, cool. Any last little thing other than that you want to say? That's it, man. All right, Thanks. Sweet. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming on the podcast. We appreciate y'all listening. We hope you tune in again. This is the podcast called I'm the Worst, but our fans are the best. See you next week.